This is the 6B31 V6 Myvec engine found in the 2007 Outlander. This is an all-aluminum, dual-overhead cam, high-performance engine with a narrow-type timing belt that is rated to go 105,000 miles before changing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's very important to install this timing belt correctly. In this video, I am going to show you how to do that. Along the way, we'll also show you some tips on a unique belt tensioner and how to make sure it keeps proper tension on the belt. That way, the belt will last 105,000 miles as rated. First, remove the crankshaft pulley and pulley washer. Next, loosen the timing belt cover bolts. Once the timing belt covers are off, remove the engine mounting. Then, using the special crankshaft wrench, tool number MD998716, rotate the crankshaft to set it to TDC. Align the timing mark with the crankshaft sprocket. Then, check to make sure the timing mark on the two cam pulleys are also lined up. Once the timing marks are all aligned, go ahead and remove the top bolt that holds the belt tensioner in place and loosen the lower bolt. The tensioner will move to the side, allowing the tension on the belt to be released. Mark the direction of the belt with some chalk. This will help you determine the correct installation of the belt if you are reusing the old belt. If you are replacing the old belt with the new one, then you don't have to mark the direction on the belt. Once tension is released from the belt, go After that, remove the belt tensioner. Now, if you are working on an engine that the crankshaft and cam timing has been moved off from TDC, then you must put the engine back in time before you install the belt. Also, as a point of reference, I will refer to the right cam or the left cam from the position in front of the engine. Begin by rotating the crankshaft around to the TDC position. Next, rotate the camshaft to align its timing mark. The camshaft on the left bank, as you are looking at the engine, is spring-loaded, so be careful when rotating this cam to its timing marks. Now, a word of caution here. When you're rotating the cams, be sure you do not hit the top of the pistons. This will bend the valves. This engine is an interference-type engine. So as a precaution, you may rotate the crank four teeth counterclockwise. Rotate the cams to line up their marks, and then rotate the crank back to the TDC position. All the marks are aligned correctly. Now you can install the timing belt. Next you must install the tensioner, but before you install it, you must bleed the unit. Place the tensioner upright in a shop press or an arbor press. Push the tensioner plunger in. If the tensioner plunger moves slightly, when a force of 22 to 44 pounds force is applied, then the tensioner requires bleeding. The reason why you need a press is because the air that is trapped inside the bottom of the tensioner must be completely removed. The internal tolerance is so small that a high amount of force must be used to displace the air inside. Slowly compress the plunger with the press. Be sure not to exceed 1,125 pounds of force. 
you may need to repeat this process two or three times or until there is no more free movement of the plunger. As the plunger retracts back into the tensioner, continue to push it until you can lock the plunger in position with a pin or drill. A two millimeter sized drill bit should be sufficient. Once the tensioner is bled, keep it in an upright position. Never tilt it more than 60 degrees from the upright position. This will prevent air from entering the tensioner. These are the shoulder bolts used to attach the tensioner to the block. Install the tensioner with the bottom bolt first. Then install the belt. If you are reusing the old belt, be sure to install it so that it rotates in the correct direction according to the mark that you made before you removed it. Install a small wooden block or other suitable device between the block and the crank sprocket so that it holds the belt in place. Once the belt is held in place by the wooden block, then continue to install the belt starting with the water pump, right bank sprocket, then the left bank sprocket. Then fit the belt over the tensioner pulley. Now move the tensioner into position and install the second bolt. Torque the tensioner bolts to the correct specification as called out in the service manual. Now remove the drill or pin to release the plunger in the tensioner. Then remove the little wooden block holding the belt in place. Next, rotate the crankshaft one quarter turn counterclockwise, and then rotate the crankshaft back clockwise to TDC to align the timing marks again. Check to make sure all the timing marks are in proper alignment. Be sure you are not off a tooth. If you are, start all over again installing the belt correctly this time. Test the belt to make sure there is sufficient tension. Now don't forget to do this important step. Rotate the crankshaft two complete revolutions in the clockwise direction. Then let it sit for about five minutes. Then recheck the timing marks. Letting the engine sit for five minutes gives enough time to see if the tensioner has provided enough tension to prevent the belt from slipping a tooth and coming out of time. Measure the protrusion of the plunger. It should be within specs. Look up the specs in the service manual and determine if the plunger has stayed within tolerance. There are silver and gold bolts used to retain the timing belt covers. Make sure the correct bolt is used in the correct location. The silver bolts retain the bottom cover and the gold bolts retain the two cam covers. Now go ahead and install the engine mount. Install the crankshaft pulley washer or dust shield with the step facing inward toward the engine. Then install the crank pulley. Place a little oil on the threads of the pulley bolt and install the bolt. Next, tighten the bolt to the correct torque. Also, you must tighten the bolt 60 degrees more to achieve the correct torque angle. If a torque angle gauge is not available, you may mark the bolt and the pulley with tape or marker. First, mark the pulley. Since the hex points of the bolt are 60 degrees apart, turn the bolt one point past the pulley mark. You have effectively turned the bolt 60 degrees. Now, in this situation, using this method to torque the crankshaft pulley bolt will work. But remember, it's always better to use the correct tool for the job. Remember to punch a mark into the bolt head to mark the number of times the bolt has been loosened. After the pulley bolt has been loosened three times, it must be replaced. And there you have it. That's all there is for now. Easy, right? Well, thanks for hanging in there with us anyway.